Willkommen, bienvenue, welcome, my name is Carola and in today's video I'm actually not in Paris because I'm doing a week tour to see all the places where Jane Austen used to live and <laughs> in combination of meeting Lucy Worldsley for the second time. Hi, I'm Brad and I'm actually leading this tour, well my wife and I. What is author fan travel? What are you doing? Well, well actually, yeah, what we do is we take authors and their fans on trips and um, and they take choose one of their books and then we take them around i booked the tour last year after meeting lucy for the first time and after it got clear that there will be a second option to meet her and then i spent the whole year saving up for it the first day is the arrival day we are all getting to london and then checking into the hotel and then there's a dinner without Lucy on the first evening, just the group getting to know each other. Um, anyway, so tomorrow morning, um, we will be meeting in the lobby where you met Mr. Wonderful. Um, is that nice? So um, we need to be in the lobby at 9.30. We need to party at 9.45. I told you what we are. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, so breakfast is provided. It's in here. And it starts at 7. It's day number two now, and we're just going down to go on the bus. And then tonight we're going to meet Lucy. This is day two, and the first stop is the British Library. There's a copy of every book that has ever been published in England in the British Library. Because it is the only 1215 edition of the Magna Carta contains a seal. So we just had a bus accident and all the mirror is gone and uh, the window is smashed. Because of the bus accident, our schedule gets mixed up and so we're going to Westminster Abbey first and then later that day we're going to the National Portrait Gallery. So here in the National Portrait Gallery you see the picture that Cassandra, Jane's sister, painted of her and I was also quite impressed by all the Tudor portraits. I've been interested in the Tudors since I was 13 and got my hands on my very first book about Elizabeth I. And here are the Bronte sisters. And this is Beatrice Potter. Let me tell you the rules for the two days that we're going to spend together. Anybody who calls me Dr. Worsley will be punished. <laughs> <laughs> he came up with a better plan. Thank you, Edward. Uh, he saved the day. He said, look, I'm so darn rich. I can give my sisters a house to live in, rent free, back in Hampshire. Quite near to where the story started in Steventon, in the village of Chawton. And this is the house that we're going to visit tomorrow. It's called Chawton Cottage today. So now we're meeting Lucy for the first time on this tour. And she's signing books and she's receiving presents and then she gives a talk. And afterwards it's dinner time and I get to sit right next to her. Again, I apologize that we have to be up at a dreadfully early time, but I think that we're all gonna do just fine. Yep. Okay? Yes. And it will be we'll so work worth it together. to get a private tour, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's, no, yeah. there's no one else there. Okay, so breakfast will be available at 6.15. We need to be checked out by 6.30. We need to be on the bus at 6.45. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is. So what time is breakfast? 6.15. And what time do we have to be checked out? 6 And when do we have to be on the bus? 6.45. So today we're going to be doing a private tour of the um, Jane Austen House Museum so in two different groups and then we're going on to Chawton House, then to Winchester and then on to that. 
we're going to be chilling at Jane Austen's house. Can you believe that we're chilling at Chawson Cottage? It's also quite early in the morning. Our group spent some time in the garden and then finally we were told that we could go into the house. Lucy took a lot of pictures for Instagram, so you can find it on her Instagram page, it's early September. The quilt that you set in the background. Oh wow. Oh. Although we call it a quilt, it's actually a coverlet. It doesn't have the wadding. Okay. That's the distinction. I didn't appreciate. A lot of times people will hand piece the cover. In Winchester Cathedral we get to see the grave of Jane Austen. So this is where she's buried, ladies and gents. And when you have a look at this, 1817, there's not a single word about her being a writer on that. I'm, I'm told that it wasn't quite the done thing for women to write, although some women did write in those days, but it wasn't uh, a regular thing for women to do, so there's no mention of it. However, we've got our own back, thank goodness. That says how great a writer she was. After the stop at Winchester Cathedral, we are walking to the last home of Jane Austen, the place where she died. Lucy has done a documentary about Jane Austen, and so of course Jane Austen fans, who would be the ones looking up her last address and going there, are also usually fans of that documentary, and so they were quite surprised to meet Lucy there. So did she seem like she was, I mean, did she suddenly become no, more ill? Long, 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 she just kept long the long process. And Kathleen can remember what the two candidates are for the illness that killed her. Yeah. Addison's disease oh, and Hodgkin's lymphoma. Not, not Hodgkin's yeah. lymphoma. And do you all know what those two things are? Because Kathleen no. does and can oh, tell you. Addison's okay. disease is a, an adrenal gland yeah. insufficiency. JFK also had it. Right. And then lymphoma is a blood cancer. None of the symptoms really match. Some of the symptoms match one and some of the symptoms match the other. Yes, I can see you prefer that particular option. And the time to come is midsummer's morning. Thank you. Hello, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, thank you. Welcome everyone to the Jane Austen Centre. So I should, I should really mention um, the great architect John Wood the Elder 
who was very responsible for Queen Square and the circus and many of the great buildings here in Bath. And there was one occasion when and um, he was he kept interrupting the, the meeting. But the chairman banged down his gavel. He said, for goodness sake, quiet, John Wood. So you've got quiet John on Wood Street right next to you. <laughs> we did have a sense of humour. There we are. Yeah. Just to say we, we followed Mr. Knightley through Bath. He pointed out a lot of places that she mentions in her books. He also showed us all the places where she used to visit a family member or where she spent a lot of time in Bath. We ended the tour in the house that her father used to rent for the family and where she lived for three years in a quite affluent area. The boat tour is the very last thing that we're doing together with Lucy and afterwards she's saying goodbye to everybody. And she really has a way to making everybody feel really special and appreciated. The next day we're doing another historical tour about Bath and it's focused a little bit more on the Roman times. Jane Austen wouldn't have known that there was a Roman bath in Bath. In her stories they're going to the pump room all the time, but she doesn't know that the bath will be discovered very close by a couple of decades later. So now we're actually having free time in Bath, but instead four of us are taking the coach and we're going to Stourhead. We're just going up to the Temple of Apollo because that is one of the movie locations for the Pride and Prejudice 2005 movie. It's actually the first proposal scene, so the one that Lizzie Bennet doesn't accept. We're currently in the town of Lakirk and it has been used in multiple films so we're just looking up a few film locations. Bake house. Yeah. They put the bake house in a separate building in case it caught fire. Laycock Abbey has actually been the movie location for so many famous movies that the one I was most impressed with, which is The Other Boleyn Girl, was more further reading and they didn't even put any pictures of this is how it looked during the film. They really didn't focus on that one. Can you please tell me in the comments which famous film is filmed here and what comes to mind for you? Basildon Park Manor House and Gardens is the location for Netherfield Park in the 2005 version of Pride and Prejudice. There were volunteers waiting for us in every room of the building.
the Octagon Room. This was Mr. Bingley's home, Netherfield Hall. And so this room here, when they filmed in here, it was not the right colours because that was of the Regency period, about 1820. So what they did is the film company built a set in this room. So on the screen, it's green, okay? They built a room within a room. So they have big columns and it's all green in keeping with the Regency period. So like, uh, the first night she did a presentation and talked all about it. And then the second night, she actually did a question and answer. And she, uh, anything anyone wanted to ask her about the book or other things too. I mean, and she's wonderful. She's so nice and, and very kind and a lot of fun. A lot of, when well, you see her on television and she's, you know, and you think, oh, she's cool. I, you know, like she's the kind of person you want to get to know. And when you do, she's awesome. Yes. Yeah, don't you think? Yeah, abs <laughs> absolutely. So yeah, Lucy is exactly as she is on TV. She's very genuine, very friendly. And not only was she in the talks that Brad mentioned, she was also with us the whole day. She did the bath tour with us. She came to us to uh, Jane Austen's cottage and yeah, it, it's just unbelievable. So yeah, that's awesome. So yeah. thank you to Brad and Kathleen for organizing that. It's just amazing. Oh, thank you. And thank you for coming too. Yeah. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's way more fun when you come, just so you know. <laughs> I hope you liked the video and if you did please give it a thumbs up and comment down below. See you next time. Bye!